Greetings, it is I, the Great One himself, Seneca Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the interwebs. Here with an anarchy moment. This morning, just woke up drinking coffee. Trying to get my shit together. Been slacking on the podcasting lately. Coming out of December, <clears throat> excuse me, coming out of December is always a little rough for me. Because December is my killer month, as those of you who listen know. I'm, I've gone back to reading the book Being Wrong, Adventurers in the Margin of Era by Katherine Schultz. So I'm plugging through that. Ah, goddamn computer. Why? We just do stuff. We just do what the hell I tell you to do. Why is this so hard? Technology, man. Fucking sucks. Sick of technology. Anyway, it's the morning. I'm coming out of December. I gotta get the podcast back on track because things derailed for a while there. I'm a little bit grumpy because of other shit, which we'll talk about in the future. It has to do with girls. Fucking girls. God damn it. Can't live with them. Can't kill them because then the bodies get cold and it's no fun having sex with a cold body but you can keep it warm by putting an electric blanket over it anyway fucking girls anyway speaking of girls being wrong the book adventures in margin of error by katherine schultz going back to reading that i'm going to do some extended book review discussion podcast about this in the future because it's a really interesting book especially it's hilarious when she's you know talking about being wrong and she's wrong about stuff like when she's talking about how you know, people are wrong because they believe things because everybody else around them believes it and they want to fit in. But then she talks about how global warming is real, which of course there's no such thing as man-made global warming. Yes, the climate is changing, but there's no such thing as man-made global warming. And, you know, she only believes that because there's a scientific consensus, which is which there isn't. But the point of that is, oh, look, everybody else believes in global warming. It must be true. So anyway, it's a fascinating book because you're reading it and she's talking about being wrong, and you're reading all the things in here she's wrong about. Which is not to say the entire book is flawed. I'm not saying that at all. It's a really good book. It's an interesting book. It's the kind of book that's going to make you think. <clears throat> because especially with something like this. Hold on. <clears throat> Pardon me. No vocal warm-ups this morning. Like I said, I'm sitting here on cup of coffee number two. I gotta slam this out. Because I got shit to do. I got to go do some teaching today. I have to go create value for other people. That's why I'm not poor there, Miss Brianne Bolin. You stupid bitch. And so anyhow, the book is interesting. Here's what I'm getting at. At one point here, she's talking about how people don't like to be wrong and all this other stuff, and which is all true. And she's got this one section where she's talking about how difficult it is for people to take their belief systems and turn their back on those belief systems. And as an example, she utilizes this young woman who grew up hardcore Christian and then become an atheist because her boyfriend was an atheist, which, you know, again, it's like, which is hilarious because so this young woman grows up Christian not thinking for herself, well, my parents are Christians, I'm going to be a Christian. And then she gets a boyfriend who's an atheist, so then it's like, oh, my boyfriend's an atheist, I'm going to be an atheist. You know, notice the common trend here is that she can't actually think for herself. Then when she broke up with her boyfriend, then how she was all conflicted between Christianity and atheism because she just didn't know what to do. And, of course, a big part of that is because... She didn't actually do any thinking in the process of her life. She was simply adapting the beliefs of the people around her. And that's not independent thinking, right? That's not critical thinking. That's not sitting down and establishing first principles and then working out from first principles. That's simply believing whatever the people around you believe so that you can fit in, which as we've discussed before, is what people do, women to a greater degree than men, but in today's society where any kind of critical thinking is frowned upon, men to an even greater degree. And people do this because they're afraid of being wrong. 
people adapt the beliefs of those around them because they're afraid of being wrong. And wrong, especially again in the year 2015, is less a matter of some sort of objective standard derived from the scientific experiment or from philosophical reasoning from a first principle. You know, being wrong now simply means not agreeing with the people around you. Like, for example, global warming. No fucking evidence, but everybody believes it because they're terrified to say, I don't believe in global warming. Anyhow, the point that I'm building up to If I can get my voice to work. Is this thing record? Yeah, this is a recording. Whew. The point I'm building up to is this. I have said in the past that libertarians, anarcho-capitalists, are a different species. Right? You've got homo anarchist <clears throat> and you've got homo statist. I've said that we're a different species. And this book only reinforces my believing this. Because she's right. The average person, the 99 percenters, cannot handle the stress, the strain, the conflict, That comes with being wrong. And so they seek the comfort of the beliefs of the people around them. Now we, as anarcho-capitalists, if you're listening to this and you're a statist, fuck you. But if you're listening to this and you're an anarcho-capitalist, <clears throat> and this is interesting, everybody comes out of the womb an anarcho-capitalist. Everybody is born an anarcho-capitalist, but then there's this, well, maybe not. Maybe I'm contradicting myself in that. I have to think about that statement. Because I was going to say, we all come out of the womb as an anarcho-capitalist, but then the state, through the education process, through our parents, through our peers, through society, you know, it corrupts us. It turns us into statists. But I don't think it's entirely true because I also think that, again, you, you can't unlearn people, this stuff. Most of them, un, some people you can unlearn, but most people you cannot unlearn because the need to be followers, the need to be slaves is so great in so many people and you can't overcome it. And so I do think there is an actual brain chemistry difference there. But here's the point, because now I'm kind of rambling into theoretical stuff that I haven't really fleshed out yet. Here's the point of what I want to say today. 20, oh, only eight minutes into the, eight minutes into the podcast. That's about right. That's about on average. Here's the point. As anarcho-capitalist, we are more wrong than anybody else. Because you see, there are no anarch... I, I haven't met any. I have not met any anarcho-capitalists who grew up anarcho-capitalists from day one. All of us who are anarcho-capitalists started out as statist. And to become ANCAPs, we had to recognize that our entire worldview was wrong. Everything. I mean, especially in my case, because, again, if you've listened to the cast for a while, you've heard this. You know, when I was young, we went to church. I believed that there was a God, yada, yada, yada. And then I was an atheist for a while. 
And you know, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm still an atheist, but the point is, I was more of a hardcore atheist. I was like anti-Christian, which is the same thing. You know, being a Christian means letting your life be defined by Christianity. Being an anti-Christian means be, letting your life be defined by Christianity. It's only being, you know, you're opposing it instead of supporting it. You're still letting it define your life. So I mean, atheist in that sense. I would guess I should say I was a statheist, because I've also been a liberal Democrat. I've been a conservative Republican. I've been a minarchist. And in all of those things, in all of those worldviews, in all of those positions, I was wrong. And I've reached the point where I look back and I recognize that and I see my wrongness. And if you're an anarcho-capitalist, you had, before you became an ANCAP, you had a whole set of worldviews. And at some point, you had the intelligence and the emotional stability to recognize that that entire set of worldviews was wrong. And you could therefore reject it and move forward. And in that sense, we as anarcho-capitalists, we are more wrong than anybody else. The left-wing statist who has been a left-wing statist for his entire life They're wrong in their beliefs, but they've not recognized any of their wrongness. And because they don't recognize their wrongness, they can't move forward. The right-wing statist, who's been a right-wing statist for her entire life, she can't recognize her wrongness and she can't move forward. And again, this brings me back to why I believe that we as anarcho-capitalists are a superior species. We do have different brain chemistry. We are superior and the statist are inferior. The statist are incapable of not just recognizing that they're wrong, but they're incapable of dealing with the conflict that comes from being wrong. Like this woman and her conflict choice over, oh, am I a Christian or an atheist? I just don't know. I mean, if you can't fucking deal with that, you're fucking stupid. As anarcho-capitalists, we have had to take our entire world views, like giant chunks of what we believe about the world, like killing other people, putting them in prison, wars, the state, the justice system, laws, right? We've had to take all of this and resolve our conflicts that, that arise from changing our world view, from recognizing our status beliefs are wrong. And we've managed to do that. And none of us are sitting in the corner sobbing and crying and all this other shit. We are wrong. We've been wrong about a shit ton of things. And in the future, if we're wrong about something else, we have the ability to look at this and go, oh shit, I'm wrong about this. Let me change what I'm doing. Let me change my belief system. Let me work with this new information and make everything fit together and go forward. Whereas the average statist, when confronted with the fact that they're wrong, you know, they either start screaming racism, sexism, homophobia, patriarchy, transgenderism, they, you know, they pass hate speech laws, whatever. Anything they can do to prevent any information that indicates they might be wrong from reaching them because they're so terrified of being wrong because they cannot deal with the emotional trauma that being wrong creates in them. And so because of their inability to deal with their own emotional trauma, they will happily put other people in cages. They will happily support politicians who murder people in foreign countries with flying robots because they're terrified of being exposed to information that contradicts their worldview. And they call us selfish. <laughs>